Um, but I know that you spent, I mean, most of your career was, you know, um, you know, you saw the 84 world series, you saw the, the, the barren years of Randy Smith during the nineties and the Oh three team. And then you saw the Dombrowski turnaround. Sure. So you've been very connected. So when we talk about this changing of the guard, I want to start with the last seven years and like, in your opinion, like what went wrong in those seven years? I can trace it really to one thing. And that is they just didn't uh, get enough talent through the front door and primarily uh, through their drafts and through their international signings. And that's why I've always thought, AJ, that people have this a little bit backwards. They want to look at payroll. They get mm -hmm. really fixated on payroll. Even as the Indians with a light payroll are going to the playoffs for the fifth time in the last seven years, mm -hmm. which proves, I think, conclusively in just one instance here that it's not about payroll. It's about the talent you're bringing in in the youth stage. And that's where they have absolutely missed. Now their drafts have been better the last four years, and that's going to be obvious increasingly over the next couple of years. And um, yet it's coming way too late. Mm -hmm. And um, for that reason, uh, you're going to have uh, this collection of 100 lost seasons. Now there are other factors that are involved. They had completely gotten into such deep red ink here that they had to get this payroll under control. It was absurd. Sure. The year in 2017 that they've got the worst le record in baseball, they're paying luxury tax. Yeah. So this thing was just out of bounds in all respects. And Mike Illich, understandably, sure. had gone right to the last breath trying to win a world championship. I understood that. But it was going to create problems with a rebuild, and it did. Um, and, and then I think the other thing was – uh, the market turned around uh, radically and dramatically where it used to be able to spin off veterans for some pretty good talent. Uh, about 2017 is when front offices got uh, this incredible sense of faith and commitment to uh, this principle that you must hang on to your young talent. That's fairly legitimate, but uh, they overreacted in some cases. And uh, that's also why the Tigers ended up with a couple of big draft chips that they got very little in return for. And that was all a product of that market uh, completely reversing in 2017 and, and maintaining it. There could have been no worse time for the Tigers to enter a rebuild than is kind of what I hear. Because when, I mean, think about 2017, right? You have J.D. Martinez, Justin Verlander, uh, Upton was traded at that time, Avila and... Um, um, the closer, Justin Wilson, also at that time. And then I, I believe it was either that year or the following year, they shipped off Kinsler after the season. Um, I mean, those were the only trade pieces that you had, unless you were willing to part with the Michael Fulmer, which, you know, you and I have disagreed about Tarek Skubal, and I must apologize because I thought you were crazy at first. But I said the same thing about Fulmer back then, and it makes sense now. It just... At the end of a rebuild, you don't want to be shipping off those those young guys. Um, the J.D. Martinez one for me is the the bigger bugaboo in in a lot of ways, and I understand that you know a light fielding power hitter is not going to draw a lot of attention, but when you ship them off on July 18th, instead of maybe waiting to see what happens in those next two weeks, do you think the return could have possibly? increase a little bit i i doubt it aj and here's the reason i i don't really second guess that trade uh, for one thing he was going to go free agency you couldn't buy him out of that and so you could take a chance on the draft pick and so forth the next year but you're probably better off at that point dealing for multiple players and giving yourself a, a, a giving yourself a chance for one out of three maybe two out of three to work uh, the problem with J.D., and, and this is unforgivable on the part of Major League Baseball, the same with Verlander, there were zero bidders for J.D. Martinez outside of the Arizona D-backs, who merely got 29 home runs from him in the final 62 games. 29 home runs in the final 62 games. That's a, put a, him a home run every two games. They were going to go away. As a bidder in July, that's why Avila made that trade in July 18th. 
everyone had steered clear of Martinez. They just weren't going to spend any of their precious draft picks or their young prospects on J.D. Martinez for a rental. Yeah. And uh, he merely uh, did really the impossible. I mean, that's a, that's an 80 home run pace uh, right. practically. So anyway, uh, you had that nonsense going on. And for that reason, I didn't second guess the Tigers. I figured that was about as good as they could do, uh, given that those three were they were not great prospects, but there was a chance for two. As a matter of fact, two out of three did reach the big leagues. They, mm-hmm. they weren't obviously long-term performers. They're not done yet in, in the case of Alcantara. But there, you just weren't going to get a boatload. So I didn't think there was any choice. It was the same situation with Verlander. And I've told this story before, but I sent Jeff Luno, the Astros, uh, an email six weeks before the trade deadline. And I'm talking about the August deadline Mm -hmm. this is mid-july saying why are you guys not bidding for j jason or or justin verlander i said i couldn't figure this thing out because i knew they weren't i knew they weren't i had enough context there was nobody i said this is a hall of fame pitcher and the astros are one starter away from the world series how can you not be going after justin verlander they didn't at the july deadline and they weren't going to at the August deadline until Hinch and the owner got together and pressured Lunau that evening, two hours before the deadline, to make the deal for Verlander. Oh, I remember. Now, I was refreshing Twitter quite often, <laughs> trying to figure out what was going on. You know, and everybody wants to hang Avila for, for that deal. Frankly, I was stunned that night at what they got for him because Franklin Perez was their number one prospect in a mm-hmm. real thoroughbred. And then you had Rodgers, who looked like he was going to at least be a backup in the big leagues at catcher. And then you had this first rounder and son of Mike Cameron, Daz Mm -hmm. Cameron, who looked like he might fulfill some dreams too. I thought it was a terrific trade because Justin Verlander was going to be wasted in Detroit. There was no point in carrying on with Mm -hmm. putting him out there every five days for a rebuilding club. He was better off going to a contender where he could do exactly what he's done for the Houston Astros. So I think people, well, you know, they didn't get anything. Well, Franklin Perez, unless he had a crystal ball and foresaw the injury, um, he was an absolute blue chipper in that thing. And uh, I, I don't blame a GM for a pitcher who had no injury history breaking down. I think that's just a, a tragic circumstance. But so I, I think people, that's where I disagree with critics and think they really don't have much basis for their outrage. Because to me, objectively, um, that was a very good and necessary deal at the time. And if anything, I thought the Tigers made out a lot better than they it had in, it probably expected to. At least that was my read on the market. Yeah, I, I my wish in that trade would have been someone like a Kyle Tucker, but you know, oh, give yeah. it for anybody. Right. But I mean, that's a young guy that hadn't had much run at the major league level and could have been potentially involved in that. Yeah. Like- Dave, I'm going to interrupt you there because Luna was not partying with Kyle Tucker. Yeah. Um, that, that was yeah. the package they were going to get. And they knew Tucker was, and everybody wanted Tucker, but right. guess what? The GM for this kid. <laughs> yeah, so I know. I, I it's it's wishful up. thinking, right? It's wishful oh, thinking. Yeah. And I mean, we, we're great at making up trades. How could you not have <laughs> traded this guy for this guy? You mean to tell me they didn't offer? Guess what? The realities, as we know, of the trade market are usually dramatically different from anything that we're seeing from the sidelines. 